Hey everybody, welcome back to the Mystics of Texas. We are gathered here today to talk about something really fascinating because are you proactive or reactive in your life? There are a lot of tools that the infinite God, the universal energies of the world have given us that we should use, that we should recognize. And one of those, and the most important, are all the tools in the toolbox of self-exploration. How do we do that? How do we better ourselves? One of those things is looking at, are we proactive to all the stuff in our life? Do we make things happen in a positive way? Are we just reacting and letting life guide us instead of us guiding our life? And then how do you measure that? You know, I mean, you can measure it over time and then it might be too late. That's a problem. So that's what we're going to talk about today. So y'all welcome. Sit back and relax. And if you're at home, thanks for joining us. I think you're going to enjoy it. We're going to use this example first because this is something everybody can relate to. You know, everything is fine with our bodies until it's not. And I don't think anybody is here that hasn't felt super healthy and then all of a sudden one day our back hurts. You know, one day all of a sudden we have migraine headaches. All of a sudden, you know, whatever ailment happens, we get it. And then all of a sudden, you're not fine. But was there anything we could have done previous to that or during those periods that would naturally, homeopathically help us become healthier again? Do, do we consider those things? Because most of the time, we don't consider it until it's too late. You know, I've thrown out my back. I've got to go to spend forever at a chiropractor. i got to, you know, all these things that happen to us. Um, and do we, we continue... All of us are responsible for this, putting these harmful chemicals in our body. And we can't hardly go to a restaurant. We can't, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. But we still do it. And we have a cancer epidemic that is outrageous in this country. And our, our country is on the fast track, fast track to being unhealthy. We're already there, but we're one of the, leading countries in the world of being horrible. That's not good. We need to be very conscious of what we do and use in our body. And we've been brainwashed, all of us, to believe certain things are wonderful. And I had a cousin of mine that was just the most beautiful person and she actively she thought she was being proactive and she ate a lot of salads and she was super health conscious. But unbeknownst to her, the salad she's eaten is not organic, it's full of all these pesticides, and she dies of cancer. And that is something we got to start paying a really heavy attention to. It is a problem. So are we proactive in what we're using? Are we just reactive? Like, oh yeah, I'm hungry, and there's the Wendy's or Burger King or whatever, and we just put the poison into our mouths. I mean, we've all done it. And how about sugar? This is bad. You know, it is grandma actively pushing death on us. Is grandma our crack dealer? You know, I mean, it, it's really serious. Like we all think that, hey, it's okay. Grandma's making us some cookies and, it, it, and that's our comfort food, right? Like who doesn't like warm hot chocolate chip cookies dip, dipped in milk? You know what I mean? That's what made us feel good when we were kids. We thought it was, came from love. I'm loving you. But what do they do? It sugar just fuels cancer. Oh, let me bake a little cake for somebody. Let me do this. Oh, because I'm doing it from a place of good intent. But you're really just giving them crack. I mean, you're you're they're com you're committing <clears throat> slow hanging is what we're doing. And what do I do? What last night or two nights ago? My lovely wife bakes us some chocolate chip cookies. You know, what, what do we do? Me and, me and my big tough buddy over here, Steve, we're like, oh, we can't wait to eat these cookies. You know, what are we doing? We're just committing suicide. It's, it's crazy. Like, I don't know what's wrong with us. We're just brainwashed. And there's so many other healthy replacements for that. I mean, that's monk fruit. That's a natural, it's another natural sugar. There's, there's a lot of them that sweeten food that are also healthy for us. But what do we do? We're being reactive. We don't use that because what have we been taught? Go, go throw the sugar in there. But there are other alternatives that are healthy for us. So instead of just 
choosing. I choose to eat life-sustaining energy instead of slowly committing suicide. It's crazy. And we wonder why our joints hurt. We wonder why we get headaches. We wonder why these things happen. It's because we are inflicting the pain onto ourselves. It's insane. That was just a good example. Or you could be proactive and uh, do what some of our members out here do. And if any of y'all hadn't been in the greenhouses lately, y'all should go walk in them. They're fun. They're just doing great. And that is our place here. So if any of y'all that are at home in the local area, we grow food, it's growing now, peppers, tomatoes, I mean, just everything. And as it grows, everybody that participates gets to have it for free. I mean, it's just free. And food security and good food should be what we've been brainwashed and taught, but it's not. We got to retrain how we think. And how about, I mean, do you, here's another great one. I mean, do you react first and think later? Do you get pissed off real fast? You know, do you let the chains of life just, ah, you know, you just start stressing out and you have to yell and scream and just go crazy? Or do you look at the chain and you take a step back and you say, oh, well, I can figure this out. Let me do, just give me a second. Let me take a deep breath. Or do we just wrap the chains around us and let ourselves drown in our own emotions? is something to ask yourself, something to look at ourselves and ask. I mean, we're all responsible for doing that to ourselves, instantly reacting and just letting the chains of life just blow us down instead of taking a step back. How can I find a solution to this? How can I get over this issue without causing myself emotional trauma? How many times do we not take that step back? You know, do we let the chains drown us? I think it's crazy. Are you one of these guys? I mean, you get to a point in your life where you're just numb. You just don't even get frustrated anymore and you don't find any solutions and you just don't do anything. And he's like, well, I'm just going to let life just glide on by. But that's just self-sabotage. I mean, ignoring problems does not make problems go away. It just doesn't. You can try to ignore them and then what happens? You can try to imagine you're an island nobody's an island. You can't go and think this is going to be a good idea to say, I don't need any friends. I hate people. I just screw this. I'm numb. I don't want anything. Well, that's also insanity. Now you're making your problems worse. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, God made us into very social beings. You know, we, we, I mentioned this many months ago. What's the worst torture is to be in self-isolation. You know, if you're in jail and you get thrown into the tank, you know, that's the worst place to be. So we have to have people. We have to figure out how to love ourselves so we can love other people. We can't ignore. We can't, uh, we're built to move. We're built to take action. We're, we're not built to procrastinate. When something's in front of us, we need to say, hey, let's take action now. Let, let's, oh, well, how about I take a step back and just go, ah, I can figure this problem out. Our energy moves. Like, good example. If me and Ricky are both, because I see Ricky every day. So if me and Ricky are both in a uh, bad mood, well, our energy is feeding each other's energy. But if one of us is not in a bad mood, the other one starts to alter that energy. Like, right before most of y'all got here, you know, we're sitting outside and hanging out. Well, at first it was me and Randall and my buddy Steve. Well, the energy is a little different. You know, we have a good, good energy. And then all of a sudden, other people started coming. Chuck starts walking up. Umberto starts coming up. All of a sudden, everybody joins us. And then the conversation and the energy levels start to change. Everybody's friendly. And so it adds more friendliness and more love to the equation. But if somebody were to walk up and was rude, all of a sudden, that's like putting that little drop of dye into a glass of water. It taints it. And we shouldn't let people taint our water. It's bad. You know, we proactive in self-forgiveness. Do we beat ourselves up? Or worse, do we blame others? I mean, we proactive in that way. Because we have to realize, too, that we all, we're going to make mistakes nonstop. Like, no matter what we're doing, I'm going to eat a cookie like I did two nights ago. You know, I'm going to eat this big pile of cookies. I'm like, 
thanks my wife who's a grandma shoveling out sugar cracked everybody you know i mean it, like what, what am i doing you know <laughs> like what am i doing it's crazy you know do i blame her for being you know my sugar crack dealer <laughs> you know i mean no i blame myself for doing it it's, it doesn't make any sense but at the same time i have to look at myself and go okay you've been conditioned your whole life to think that was a nice, kind gesture and something of love, which it was. It was a nice, kind gesture of love, but the love just happened to be round, uh, wrapped up in poison that is slowly killing me and feeding my internal cancer cells. I mean, you got to think about it. You got to start unbrainwashing your mind, and it is very difficult, and we need help. We need help like with all of y'all at home and, and everybody that's here. Like we have to help each other, not be jackasses. That's just part of the thing. It's just part of it. We have to take responsibility for our life, our relationships, our health, the, how we treat others, how we treat ourselves. How we treat ourselves emotionally is vital. Because if we let our, if, if we just encourage ourselves to explode all the time, Man, are we doing uh, ourselves a disservice? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we are. Because first of all, who wants to be around that person? Our spiritual nature is vitally important. So if we're not taking care of our spirit and realizing that we're going to stumble, we're going to fall, we're going to make mistakes, none of us are perfect, certainly not me, and we have to forgive ourselves. We have to say, okay, I just treated myself and somebody else bad or not the way I should. So, hey, just not do that again. You know, pat yourself on the back and say, hey, it's okay. It's okay, Kev. You're all right. It's okay, Wayne. I I'm, I'm, I'm stumbled, but I don't have to keep stumbling. And I say everybody has faith, even an atheist. They believe in something. They believe whatever. But how many of us have woken up and said, you know, I just knew today was going to be a good day, and it was a good day. How many of us have woken up and said, this day's going to suck? You know, you had faith that today was going to be good or you had faith that today was going to suck. Like you told yourself that narrative and you made it come true. You have faith that your belief system and your spiritual belief system is better than everybody else's. Everybody else is wrong, so screw you. I have faith in that. I have faith that everybody else is stupid and I must be right. Faith that the day is going to be good or bad. You set it up for yourself. And often our faith determines the outcome of every circumstance. So are we proactive or reactive? Am I proactive in uh, how I think? Am I having an open mind? How about proactive in connecting or disconnecting? You know, are you reacting because something bad has happened to you that day? You perceive it as just something horrible. You're frustrated over something and then you just feel like you have to disconnect from everything. I just have to disconnect from you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to you. I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go be in my little world and run around like a hamster in a damn wheel being an idiot. I mean, we all of us, I don't think anybody here or anybody at home has not had that happen. But shouldn't we catch ourselves? I mean, we love ourselves. We want to love ourselves, right? So shouldn't we catch ourselves and go, oh, okay, I can see myself getting out of hand right now. I should probably not be my own enemy. I should not be my own enemy. You know, how often do we connect? You know, are we proactive in connecting with ourselves, with others, to nature, with our God? Are we praying and meditating? Are we hanging out with the people that are going to elevate our moods? Or do we just self-isolate? We retreat, we go inside. You know, I mean, everybody's set like those two people, just, oh God, the world's so bad. It's fall falling apart. But you know, how about if you just decide to connect? You know, like we did last weekend, all out here doing yoga and having a great time. You know, we're all connecting. We're all playing in nature. And we're all laughing. Even the people that thought yoga was stupid. You know, I mean, it, 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 was, it was funny. It, it was fun and we were all connecting. How about being proactive with picking your friends? You know, you are who you hang around. 
So if you hang around people that don't honor their word, then you very likely don't honor your word. I mean, how many of us have had the friends that say, hey man, it's Friday night, let's go get effed up. You know what I mean? How crazy is that? You know what I mean? How crazy? If we pick friends that are constantly striving to be better people in all aspects of their lives, wouldn't we better be better off making each other smile and laugh and having a good time and connecting in nature and meditating and praying and and reading and doing, you know, just taking care of being good stewards of the land, just good stuff. Or do we just want to stay in a dark corner and, you know, get cracked out? You know, let grandma bring us some more sugar. You know, I mean, what, what do we want to do? You know, if you're a negative person, always looking for a fight, your friends are likely the same way. If you stay high, your friends are probably high. If you like to have intellectual discussions and be curious and figure out problems within your own life and help other people, then your friends are probably very similar. So it's ultimately when you get home and one of the first people you text or call, you just know you're texting yourself because you are like those people. You're either them, and if you don't want to be them, you better pick the right friends. So are you proactive or reactive? You let friends just come to you. Oh, this guy's nice. He gives me you know, free pot. You know, I mean, is that really being nice? I don't think so. I mean, do we feel alone? I know I feel alone sometimes and I really like being alone a lot of times. But are you proactive in maintaining existing positive relationships in very productive ways? It, it's tough. You know, we all are friends here. But how often do we reach out to our friends? How many times have you ran across somebody that you haven't seen in a long time and you're good friends with them and you think they're still a decent person and you go man it's been so long it's good to see you man it's great to see you and, and then you leave that and you kind of feel like you were just talking to a stranger but why does that happen we just let things just go I mean, it's tough if you have a good person that's your friend you have to reach out to them often you have to text them, you know, once a week, once two weeks, at least once a month, you know, to ask them how they're doing. It's not easy being somebody's friend. Sometimes it has to be inconvenient. It just is. You know, are you real reactive? Like you really are good at telling people to F off? You know, somebody irritates you, a friend irritates you, Steve irritates you, you know, whatever. Does that just, you know, F you, Steve. You know, <laughs> I mean, you know, I don't, it just says nuts. That's nuts. So we have to be proactive. If we go down a cycle of saying, I don't want to be with anybody, I just want to be locked up in my room, are we, doing, are we proactively benefiting ourselves or are we reacting to our emotions and not changing them? It's important. Man, I love that. That girl, you do not want to be hit by that girl. Look at that girl throwing that punch. <laughs> No, she's going to knock your ass right out. But you know, whenever somebody's up in your face, hollering or screaming, or first of all, you know they're never listening to you. Anybody screaming at somebody, they're never going to understand what you're saying, and you're never going to get to them. So, you know, I can see, you see that girl there. That other girl's probably yelling and screaming. She's like, well, what am I going to do? I'm going to knock her out. Or you can just turn around and walk away. You can say, hey, I can take a step away and be all right. I mean, I know there's a lot of tough guys out here today. And I know each one of us have been in a situation where somebody's popping off and we've actually acted like that girl. Like I see six of us right now. <laughs> that, that, I'm, that we have done that. I have done that. But would it have been a lot better if you just turned around and walked off? Why let somebody else screw up your emotions? Why let somebody else get under your skin so bad that it screws up your day. And then after you knock them out or you get knocked out, whatever, you leave and then the rest of your day, you're talking about it. You're thinking about it. All of a sudden that ignorant person, you allow their ignorance to get absorbed in you. So are you being proactive for yourself or are you just being reactive to negative energy? And do you think about it? Do you catch yourself? How about working through your trauma? Man, are you proactive and where everybody has trauma? I don't care who you are. I don't care if you say you don't. If you say you don't, you're a liar and you don't know yourself. We all have trauma. 
do you recognize your pain or you see your pain and then you project it onto everybody else? You think whatever my emotions are, however everybody has treated me, everybody else is going to do the same thing. So screw you. Are you one of those people that like to talk about your trauma so you can have that victim card? You know, I'm, I'm the, I got to talk about my bad stuff all the time so everybody feels sorry for me. Well, that's a problem too. But it's also very beneficial to genuinely discuss your issues with others. But often that can become a problem too because uh, I've gone to shrinks in my life and, and I'm not embarrassed to say that. And uh, I found that the more I repeated my trauma, the more I was reliving it. I just kept reliving it. I kept bringing those bad negative emotions into my life instead of dealing with that trauma. And this is a good practice that me and Jill discovered uh, some months ago is let's say you're an abused little boy and that still haunts you. Man, if you can just meditate, close your eyes and just talk to that little boy like, hey, it's okay. Hey, that person that did whatever it was to you, they were ignorant and it was not your fault. Those problems were coming, that issue was coming from them, not from the beautiful little kid that you are. And tell that, and use that gift God gave us of imagination to be able to talk to your little child and say, hey, that was not you, I love you. And just start working through it. Man, are you proactive with gossip? Are you reactive? Somebody else says something negative about somebody and you got to fire it up? You're like, oh yeah, he is a jackass. I hate that guy. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you just keep on and feeding it and feeding it and feeding it. You're like, yep, yep. You got to be, you got to stop being around negative uh, gossiping people because unless it's a factual thing, unless you're saying something absolutely factual, then don't say anything. You know, Mama had it right. If you don't have anything good to say about anybody, don't say it at all. It's probably a pretty good idea. But sometimes, you know, friends are going to say something and you, and you got to talk about it. Somebody you get a reference or, you know, whatever. You got to speak factual, not your hurt feelings. Because you damage yourself. You bring yourself down. So you're being proactive or reactive. It's something. How about proactive and set our goals? Man, I got thousands of people I've known in my life that they let life guide them. They let life guide them. They do not guide their own life. They don't set these tiny little goals that ultimately end up to a big achievement. Because you're not going to get from being super awesome in every aspect of your life the next day. It takes one little step, and then the next day another little tiny step, and then another tiny step, and then next thing you know, you're 10 miles down the road to success in all aspects of your life. And you've got to have patience. And you got to make the effort. Are you proactive in setting goals to do something instead of just bitching about it all the time? Oh man, my life sucks. I don't have any money. I don't do this. But what have you done? You know, what have you done? Have you taken the steps every day, just something small, so you end up getting where you want to go? Are you proactive or reactive? Are you letting life tell you how to live instead of you living like you want to live? I don't know. Probably should ask yourself. This was a big deal for me, being proactive or reactive and recognizing the harmful environment around us and from you know, pesticides on our salads or uh, all the chemicals around us, how water in a water bottle is leaking all the poisons from the plastics. And you know, I mean, all these things, am I proactive in recognizing what is harming me? And there are forever chemicals and all sorts of stuff, like it's everywhere now. And once you use them, it's bad. So I just want y'all to know that Band-Aids, and this is a big deal that came out about a week or two ago, Band-Aids have forever chemicals in them. So whenever you have a cut and you put the Band-Aid on, just like your mama or whoever told you, uh, you don't get those chemicals out of your body. They stay there practically forever. So trust is a big deal. You know, are we proactive in, in learning what's happening in our environment and around us. It's really problematic and it's even worse than most people can imagine because, you know, we like to think of baby powder as like something, it's baby powder, it sounds cute, it's nice. 
But Johnson & Johnson paid $8.9 billion to settle their case for causing cancer from baby powder. All of these big companies that we know that own every brand and almost every grocery store, there's a massive amount of poison. And then we have to use what God gave us in critical thinking going, okay, why am I being brainwashed to want those cookies grandma's giving us? Because they're selling it to me. They're buying my mental real estate so they can then also take my money from when I have to go to the hospital, then whenever I have to go get this medication. And then they just got me. They got me from the time I'm bored, born, entering and owning my mental real estate. It's a big, bad problem. It's a bad, bad problem. But we have to trust. We have to trust the people around us. We just have to. So we better figure out what it is we're doing. We got to be proactive. So we're going to wrap this up with, I want y'all to think about it and think about your own life. So are you being proactive in everything you do or reactive? You know, being proactive creates health, confidence, trusted friendships. It creates knowledge of our environment. We can have food security. We can have financial stability. We can have spiritual connection. We can build each other up. Are we being proactive with that or are we being reactive? I have to catch myself all the time being reactive. And I'm fortunate I have a lot of people around me that help me be proactive instead. And so I thank y'all for that. And next week, we're going to discuss next week the history of religion and its impact on the human spirit. I think it's going to be a fun one. So if this resonates with y'all watching at home and you're local, you're somewhere nearby, come out, come make new friendships, come see what we're all about. Go to themysticsoftexas.com and thank y'all for joining us. We'll see you next time.